Hello people, so let us look at chronic dacryocystitis. Okay, so till now what have you seen? Till now you saw the lacrimal apparatus structure and all that, right? So you have seen that this is the lacrimal sac, right? This, the inflammation of this lacrimal sac is uh, dacryocystitis. Here we are looking at a chronic condition uh, where it is always inflamed, right? So you know what lacrimal apparatus is, you know what uh, acute dacryocystitis is. We have already looked at all this. Now we are moving on to chronic dacryocystitis. So basically it is more common, uh, interestingly this is a more common condition than the acute one. So basically here etiology, you know what it is, right? It is the inflammation of the lacrimal sac etiology. So let us look at why it happens. So let us look at the etiology. So first of all you have understood it is a more common than acute condition right than the acute dacryocystitis it is actually the inflammation of what lacrimal sac okay so the causes here will be it's a vicious cycle of stasis and mild infection of long duration so this basically they are telling it is a uh, uh, there will be stasis stasis of all these tears right stasis of the tears etc and mild infection of long duration so that is why it is chronic right for a long duration it is there that's why it's chronic okay so basically under etiology they are discussing predisposing factors what are the predisposing factors right age somewhere between 40 to 60 years the gender in females 80 percent they are saying then they are saying race race usually it is there in whites okay and uh, hereditary Hereditary, it plays an um, indirect role. It affects the facial configuration and some socioeconomic factors, guys, low socioeconomic group, obviously, you will write all this poor personal hygiene and all that, okay? So, we looked at the predisposing factors. Now, let us move on to the factors responsible for stasis of tears in lacrimal sac. So, why is the tear, why are the tears not moving out? So, you know, basically, in this uh, lacrimal apparatus, you know that the tears come from the lacrimal gland. And then via the puncta, they enter the canaliculi and from there they enter the lacrimal sac and they drain out of this nasolacrimal duct, right? This is what the normal is. But for some reason, these tears, they undergo stasis here in the lacrimal sac, right? Because of which this chronic uh, dacryocystitis can happen, right? So, you are understanding. Now, let us look at the factors responsible for the stasis. For what? Factors responsible for stasis of tears. Where? In the sac. In which sac? In lacrimal sac. Okay. So the factors will be anatomical factors. So basically a comparatively narrow bony canal, partial canalization of membranous nasolacrimal duct, excessive membranous folds in the nasolacrimal duct. So some anatomical reasons okay then coming to foreign bodies foreign bodies uh, may be there which are blocking right typical stuff you will write foreign bodies which are causing the stasis of the tears then excessive lacrimation so basically there is excessive lacrimation itself secretion of tears itself is more okay so it is not able to drain it out maybe then mild grade inflammation mild grade inflammation okay of the lacrimal sac due to associated recurrent conjunctivitis okay that may block the nasolacrimal duct because of some epithelial debris mucus plugs okay so what and all will be there epithelial debris mucus plugs so mucus plugs basically here you should say what is blocked the nasolacrimal duct is blocked okay Then, obstruction of lower end of nasolacrimal duct by some disease like polyp or hypertrophied inferior concha. So, basically NLD, the nasolacrimal duct lower part is obstructed due to polyps, due to polyps, due to some hypertrophied inferior concha. Okay. Then, 
deviated nasal septum a marked degree a huge they are saying deviated nasal septum okay tumors at atrophic rhinitis causing stenosis okay atrophic atrophic rhinitis causing stenosis okay so stagnation of tears will happen in the lacrimal sac because of these factors so guys what are we looking at today chronic dacryocystitis in this we have looked at the etiology in that we looked at the factors which are responsible for the stasis of the tears in the lacrimal sac so here you have the eye and here you have the lacrimal sac let's see so why is there stasis of the tears here because there is excessive secretion of the tears or there is some foreign body which blocks here or there is some anatomical factor where this canal itself is very narrow right or there is some excessive folds of this membrane right or there is mild grade inflammation uh, recurrent conjunctivitis right conjunctivitis which may block the nasolacrimal duct because of some epithelial debris or mucus plugs right obstruction of the lower end of nasolacrimal duct due to polyps or hypertrophied inferior concha deviated nasal septum tumors a to atrophic rhinitis causing stenosis so have you understood the etiology the factors responsible for the stasis of the tears in the lacrimal sac okay so we are discussing what chronic dacryocystitis now let us move on in etiology itself we have to move on to source of infection so let us look at the source of infection okay so source of infection means what you will say source of infection from where is the infection coming so basically the nasal lac and the lacrimal sac can get infected because from the conjunctiva or the nasal ca cavity that will be a re retrograde spread right from the nasal cavity right from the nasal cavity if the lacrimal sac is getting infected then it is a retrograde great spread okay so uh, from the para nasal sinuses right from these three places where and all from conjunctiva from the nasal lac uh, nasal cavity or from the para nasal sinuses if if they get infected then this is the source of infection now let us look at the causative organisms causative organisms same thing staphylococcus streptococcus pneumococcus and here they have included pseudomonas pyocyanea also okay so rarely some other infections can be there like tuberculosis syphilis leprosy rhinosporidiosis also can cause dacryocystitis do you know this rhinosporidiosis have you looked at the photo so this is uh, rhinosporidiosis so this can lead also lead to rarely it can lead to this chronic dacryocystitis now let us move on to the clinical features guys of uh, chronic dacryocystitis what do you say okay so we are studying what chronic dacryocystitis now we will move on to the clinical features of this okay of this condition okay so what do you what will you see here guys there are uh, four stages here in this stage of chronic catarrhal dacryocystitis okay then you have another stage called as stage of lacrimal mucosal okay that is the second stage now third stage is what stage of chronic suppurative dacryo dacryocystitis some pus here stage of chronic suppurative dacryocystitis then stage of chronic fibrotic sac so guys let us look at these four stages in detail okay after this let us cover the complications treatment okay of uh, these only complications and treatment will be left so let us look at these stages now chronic catar catarrhal dacryocystitis okay so basically here it is uh, there is mild inflammation okay there is blockage of nasolacrimal duct watering eye will be there okay at this stage this seems to be the only symptom watering eye mild redness in the inner canthus on syringing the lacrimal sac either clear fluid or few fibrous fibrinous mucoid flakes regurgitate okay 
Dacryocystography reveals block in nasolacrimal duct. So what and all are you seeing here? Usually it will there will just be some mild inflammation. Mild inflammation will be there. Okay. Blockage of nasolacrimal duct. Watering eye. Dacryocystography will re reveal a block in nasolacrimal duct. Dacryocystography will reveal a NLD block. Right. On syringing, you will get what? Clear fluid or fibrinous mucoid flakes. Okay. On syringing, you will get clear fluid or a fibrinous mucoid flakes. Basically, you can understand here at this stage, it is not infected yet. Right. So, at this stage, there will be a, so if this is the eye and here you have the nasolacrimal duct here. You can see this duct will be blocked, right? Here there will be some clear fluid in the lacrimal sac. There will be a lot of watering of eye, right? So this will be the symptoms in the chronic catarrhal dacryocystitis. Okay, this is the first stage, stage of chronic catarrhal dacryocystitis. But what do you mean by this catarrhal? So this seems to be the inflammation of the mucous membrane, usually in reference to the throat or paranasal sinuses. Okay. Inflammation of mucous membrane. Okay. Now let us move on to stage of lacrimal mucosine. So basically, in the stage of lacrimal mucosine, uh, what will be there? Constant epiphora. That is, out block the outflow of these tears are blocked. Constant epiphora. Swelling just below the inner canthus. Regurgitation test. When you uh, put pressure on the lacrimal sac, you will get milky or gelatinous mucoid fluid. Okay. From the lower punctum, it will be there. So, are you actually understanding what is happening, guys? So, when they put pressure on the lacrimal sac, right, they will get milky or gelatinous mucoid fluid from where? From the lower puncta. From the lower puncta, they will get, okay. Let us show from the lower puncta. When you put pressure on the lacrimal sac, from the lower puncta, you will get milky or gelatinous fluid, okay, mucoid fluid. Here, there will be a swelling just below the inner canthus, right? That is a mucosil. So, when you do dacryocystography, you will see a distended sac with blockade somewhere in the nasolacrimal duct. So, you will see that there is a distended sac. Obviously, the sac would have become big and the nasolacrimal duct will have some kind of a obstruction, right? Encysted mucosil. So, you can see here an encysted mucosil due to continued chronic inflammation, opening of both the canaliculi are blocked. So, both the canaliculi are blocked. Both the canaliculi are blocked. Okay. So, what happens? Large fluctuant. Large fluctuant swelling is seen at the inner canthus with a negative regurgitation test. So, basically here, this is an insisted mucosil. You cannot get anything when you put pressure here. So, regurgitation test will be negative here. But here, there is a insisted mucosil because the canaliculi are blocked. Whenever you press, you will not get any output. So, this is an insisted mucosil. Okay. So, let's move on then. Stage of lacrimal mucosil we have seen. Now, let us move on to the third one. Stage of chronic suppurative dacryocystitis. Suppurative means what? Now, some bacteria has come. It has become infected, right? Due to pyogenic infection, the mucoid discharge becomes purulent. Okay, now the discharge is becoming what? It is becoming purulent, that is pus. So, the mucosil now became a pyocil. So, now what has the mucosil become? It has become a pyocil. Okay, this character, again this condition has epiphora, that is, there is a block to the outflow of the tears associated with recurrent conjunctivitis, swelling at the inner canthus, mild erythema, all these will be there. On regurgitation, a frank purulent discharge. So, when you Press it, what will you get? You will get purulent discharge from the lower punctum. And that purulent discharge can come only if the canaliculi are not blocked. But now let us say these canaliculi are blocked. So when you put pressure on the lacrimal sac, then you will not be able to get any output. So that time this will become an insisted pyocil. Okay. Earlier you saw an insisted mucosil, right, where there was no pus inside, but it was insisted. And the regurgitation test was negative. Here regurgitation test is negative because the canaliculi are blocked, but here inside what is that? Pus is there, so it will become a 
encysted pyocele okay so the last stage here is the chronic fibrotic sac what are you seeing here chronic fibrotic sac okay now here low grade repeated infections for prolonged period they will result in a small fibrotic sac due to thickened mucosa so again there is persistent epiphora discharge okay dacryocystography at this stage it will show that there is a very small sac because it has got fibrosed with irregular folds in the mucosa so these are the four stages what are the four stages guys chronic catarrhal dacryocystitis lacrimal mucosal suppurative then you have the fibrotic so first of all there is inflammation then mucosal possibly it can become suppurative then fibrotic now we have to look at the complications of chronic dacryocystitis let us look at the complications and then at the treatment so now let us look at the complications of chronic dacryocystitis okay so what do you think will be the complication guys think so there is inflammation of the lacrimal sac right so what do you think will result because of this chronic inflammation of this there will be chronic conjunctivitis right chronic intractable conjunctivitis acute or chronic so this will lead to this conjunctivitis acute on chronic dacryocystitis okay so there can be because of this chronic uh, chronic dacryocystitis there can be acute exacerbation of this cr chronic dacryocystitis okay then ectropion of lower lid so of the lower lid something will happen the lower lid right this is the lower lid let's say ectropion what do you mean by ectropion so ectropion means eyelids turn outwards ecto ectropion so their eyelids are turning outward okay so the eyelid is turning outward okay so ectropion of the lower lid maceration and eczema of lower lid skin okay so there will be maceration and eczema of the lower lid skin due to prolonged watering so there's prolonged watering always watering watering so the skin also got spoiled okay so then corneal ulceration will happen okay then what else will happen guys because why this corneal ulceration will happen because there will be corneal abrasion on this abrasion will become ulceration high risk of developing endophthalmitis so they will get endophthalmitis so basically endophthalmitis is the purulent inflammation of the intraocular fluids that is the vitreous and the aqueous oh wow so all the the vitreous and aqueous human also are getting infected so let us say this is the eye so here you have uh, before the lens you have the aqueous humor and after the lens you have what vitreous humor right so all these are getting infected wow that is endophthalmitis endophthalmitis or endophthalmitis so in this uh, we have looked at what we have looked at the complications so let us list the complications now complications what and all you saw complications you saw conjunctivitis very easy to say that then acute on chronic dacryocystitis right then ectropion of the lower eyelid ectropion of lower lid then you have the maceration and maceration and eczema of lower lid skin because of continuous watering because of continuous watering prolonged watering then corneal ulceration right then high risk of developing end of thalmitis that is aqueous humor and um, vitreous humor humor also get infected right so high risk of developing end of thalmitis is always there if an intraocular surgery is performed in the presence of dacryocystitis okay so this happens only if there is a intraocular surgery performed so it is not so easy to affect them only if an intraocular surgery is performed intraocular surgery is performed in presence of dacryocystitis okay then 
that is why what happens in suspected cases before doing any intraocular surgery they will syringe the lacrimal sac so before doing intraocular sur surgery in suspected cases they will always syringe the lacrimal sac to prevent endophthalmitis okay so now let us move on to the treatment for chronic dacryocystitis so we are done with the complications now we move on to the treatment treatment of chronic dacryocystitis chronic dac cryocystitis let us look at the treatment okay so treatment conservative treatment conservative treatment conservative treatment basically probing and lacrimal syringing right so if this doesn't work so conservative is actually probing and lacrimal syringing if this doesn't work you always have the balloon catheter catheter dilation so what and all you have learned now probing then balloon catheter dilation okay this is also called as balloon dacryocystoplasty this is also called as balloon b a l l o o n balloon dacryocystoplasty okay so this can be tried in patient with partial nasolacrimal obstruction so 50% success rate will be there if there is partial nasolacrimal duct obstruction okay then next what will you do same thing you've heard this so many times that cryocysto rhinostomy right so you will bypass the obstruction etc right re establish the lacrimal drainage okay so before doing this kind of a procedure you should always make sure that the infection is controlled by topical antibiotics then you have the dac cryocystectomy that is the dct this is dac cryocystectomy so only when dcr is contraindicated they will do a dct so for dct the contra what are the indications the indications will be if the patient is too old markedly shrunken or fibrosed sac so it is almost in the advanced stage right then if there is tuberculosis syphilis leprosy or mycotic infections of the sac so these are very rare infections actually or if there are some tumors of the sac like um, and if there are gross nasal diseases like atrophic rhinitis okay so what are the indications for uh, dct that is dac cryocystectomy to old patient okay or markedly shrunken and fibrosed sac right or if there is tuberculosis syphilis leprosy mycotic infections that is fungal infections of the sac okay or if there is some tumor right or there is some gross nasal diseases like a trophic a trophic rhinitis okay then there is one more treatment that they want to give so we are looking at what today dacryocystitis the chronic dacryocystitis treatment the fifth point they are mentioning here is conjunctivo dacryocysto rhinostomy look at the name of the surgery cdcr that is conjunctivo dac cryo cysto cysto rhino stomy okay so conjunctivo dac cryo cysto rhino stomy okay so this is a uh, this is performed in presence of a blocked canaliculi so if there is blocked canaliculi they do this so where is the canaliculi so if this is the eye is the nose and here you have the lacrimal sac here you have the canaliculi which connects this right the puncta to the lacrimal sac so if the connect, uh, canaliculi are blocked then they will do this conjunctivo dacryocysto rhinostomy okay cdcr so in this we have covered the treatment of chronic dacryocystitis okay so let's take a recap of chronic dacryocystitis 
So basically, it, it is a chronic inflammation of the lacrimal sac. It is more common than the acute condition. So here there will be stasis of the tears in the lacrimal sac because of uh, anatomical reasons, foreign bodies, uh, some excessive lacrimation, some inflammation, uh, nasolacrimal duct could be blocked due to polyps, etc. Source of infection, the same thing, stab, strep, pneumococcus and uh, one more has been mentioned here. That is the, what was that? Pseudomonas, pyocyania, right? Okay, and in very rare cases, you can have tuberculosis, syphilis, leprosy, rhinosporidiosis, etc. This one is uh, indicating rhinosporidiosis. Causative organisms, okay, causative organisms, those were the causative organisms. Source of infection, from where did the infection reach the lacrimal sac? From the conjunctiva or from the nasal cavity, that is a retrograde spread or from the paranasal sinuses. Then we saw the clinical features of uh, chronic dacryocystitis where we have seen the four stages, the four stages like you have the chronic catarrhal dacryocystitis where there is watering eye etc. There is no infection at this point. Then you have a lacrimal mucosal. If the canaliculi gets uh, blocked, then it will be a encysted mucosal. As of now also, there is no infection. Now when infection sets in, it will become suppurative. It will become a pyocele. If the canaliculi are blocked, it will become a encysted pyocele. Right? There is epiphora here. That is block outflow. Outflow is blocked. Then you have the chronic fibrotic sac. Okay, then we saw the complications, typical things, conjunctivitis, uh, ectropion of lower lid. So, the chronic condition can have acute attacks, then maceration and eczema of the lower lid skin, corneal ulceration, right, end up on thalmitis only if a surgery is done, intraocular surgery is done in the presence of a dacryocystitis. Okay, now let us look at the treatment. Conservative treatment is there, probing, lacrimal syringing. Then if that doesn't work, you have the balloon catheter dilation. You have seen the balloon catheter, right? See, that is a balloon at the end of this catheter, right? Then you have the dacryo rhino. What is this? Dacryo rhino stomy. Dacryo cysto. Dacryo cysto rhino stomy. Then you have the dacryo cystectomy. Then you have the conjunctivo dacryocysto rhinostomy. Okay. So this is nothing but a CDCR. That is easier to remember, right? DCR, CDCR. Conjunctivo dacryocysto rhinostomy. Okay. So we have completed chronic dacryocystitis in this video. Okay. We will meet you in the next video, guys. Bye bye.